Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for a fabulous cooking and wine pairing segment brought to you by Urban Wine Club and also Greek Wine Club and Greek Azan. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that a little later, but this is the Urban Wine Club uh, Greek cooking and wine pairing segment. I'm Ari. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have a very, very special guest today, uh, all the way from Utah. But before we get to her, let me introduce my co-host, Foti Stamos. Hello, Foti. Yeah, so Ari, thank you so much for that great introduction. And, I, and we're super excited because this actually happens to be our very first cooking demo in wine pairing. Yeah. And what a better way to kick it off with our special guest that's with us, as you said, all the way from Utah. But uh, these segments for us are very dear and true to our hearts because we're going to be able to uh, bring back some of the classics of our Greek cuisine mm -hmm. and understand that cuisine a little better with our wine pairing. So before we talk anymore, let's welcome our guest all the way from Salt Lake City, maybe not within Salt Lake City, but somewhere around there. Uh, Eleni Saltas, Eleni, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I feel like a foreigner when you're like, all the way from Utah. <laughs> it's, it's weird for you because, you know, you're there and your people are there and everybody you know is there. But for yeah. us, we're like all the way over here. So it's like a little, it's a little like treat it's for us to have. Yeah, like California is further away. But that's true. Like, that's true. Utah, Utah is, um, a lot of people don't realize a lot of Greeks are in Utah. So yeah. So you, you mentioned uh, earlier um, that at some point, it was like 10% of Utah was Greeks. Right, yeah. So when like the labor work was coming through in like 1900s, 10% of Utah's population were was Greek. Um, wow. Came here to do work in coal mines and railroads and things like that. Um, there's a huge population, mostly centered around the mining cities of Utah. Now I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. So I think that someone just asked that, so yeah. Salt Lake City, Utah is where I am at now. Could I ask a dumb question? Of course. Ask a man. Is all I know about Salt Lake City is Mormon. So <laughs> is that is that real? Like, is it mostly Mormons or is that just like. That's all, it is. all it is. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So that's like what we're obviously known for is our Mormon, our Mormon um, influence. Um, yes. Most of the people or I don't know the population now, but heavy influence of Mormon population and which I think has created all these like subcultures and why Greeks here are very close to each other. So we have like in our church, we have like our Goya basketball, um, like everything like that. Everyone stays really close together, dances. Mm -hmm. So just because there's nothing really else for us to cling to. So it's, it's kind of worked out for us to. That's really our, cool. That, that kind of reminds me that, that, uh, when you explain it that way, it kind of reminds me of like when when the Greeks first really started immigrating to the United States, they were like kind of the outsiders. So they all stuck together. So yeah. when you don't you don't have a lot around you, you kind of stick together. And that's that's actually kind of cool. I like that. So we're still like that. We're still the outside. <laughs> yeah, we're, we stick together for sure. Kind but of, now, now you're spreading that. out. You're yeah. spreading out virtually. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what makes it even more fascinating is that uh, we need to mention that you know, Eleni um, is um, a cookbook author who has a fabulous book called All You Can Eat. Or All You Can All Eat. You could greet you. All you ruined the quick, the, the witty title, Fati. <laughs> All You Can Greek, which uh, for me, uh, looking at the book and, and knowing that uh, Eleni being a young Greek American, um, it's it's for me, it's refreshing to see someone of your generation who's really bringing back the culture through food. Because we've mentioned in previous conversations about how as our time goes on and you know generations are going by, we start to lose an element of our culture, whether it be the language, whether it be the food, our, you know, our customs and so forth. And the dishes that I've seen in the recipes in your book, I have to commend you on you know, the work and effort that you put into this and that's one of the biggest reasons why I, I felt strong about bringing you on is because, you know, you have something to, to show as far as, you know, we need to kind of bring it back. And your book is definitely going to do that when we get that out to most of our audience and to our network. And 
I just want to say bravo for putting that wonderful book together. And we'll talk about the book later on and give people more details. And in this segment, and I'm sure on our future segments, we're going to pick recipes from your book that you're going to help demonstrate and show how to people like Ari, how easy it is to put these dishes together um, and keep that Greek element alive, right? It still might not be easy enough for me, but I'll, I'll try my best. Right, right. But talking about that cookbook, I, I just have to say, I'm, I'm come from a design background and Eleni put this book together herself. She did the photography herself. You will not know that she is not a 100% a professional. This book is gorgeous. Yes. So, oh, I'm like, I, blessing with you. <laughs> so before we get into our segment with Eleni, Eleni, uh, give us a little bit about who you are, your background, and what led you to this journey uh, for the publication and the writing of your cookbook. Well, thank you. Okay, so um, first of all, thank you so much for having me being the first cooking host on your show. <laughs> I've, I've had the pleasure of hopping on a call or two of what you guys are starting, and I think what you're doing is awesome, bringing Greeks together or anyone together to learn about so many different wines and foods and things like that cocktails so thank you so much so a little bit about me i have i am from salt lake city utah as we mentioned i have a background in health and fitness i have been um, working as a personal trainer for about seven years so that's kind of what started my whole journey here i i started a fitness blog really like years ago and i started doing like little fitness tips, like get out and walk and do, um, here's like some like things you can eat that are a little healthier. And then like, then one day I just wrote, um, about rice pudding risogolo and that took off. People were like, we're sharing it. And I was like, I have been blogging and all this and well, thanks to risogolo. And then risogolo <laughs> takes off. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so people obviously care about food more than what I had to say about fitness. So I, I would kind of, I'd still with the stick with the fitness stuff, but then I started doing more heavily with the food. And so I just like blog here and there. It was kind of like more sporadic. And then um, I started adding like the story element to it. Um, and then when I was in Greece a few years ago, I thought of writing a book and I thought of the title before I even like had any true writing experience, um, and photography experience as well. So I was like, I want to write a cookbook. I've always loved cookbooks and my dad has hundreds of them. And so they've all been, always been around our house, famous chefs like Dan Kuchilis and, um, Silaki and things like that. So, um, I was like, I want to write a cookbook for my generation because like you said before, we're losing touch with that. I'm losing touch with it. I'm a fourth generation Greek and living in America. And I wanted to write these stories of my family and um, like a concrete way to hold on to those. So that's kind of where the book kind of stemmed and grew. So a lot of my blogging, background to writing a book and I just like really wanted to have a book to hold so um, I did all the photography um, I was telling you guys the other night I was um, I'm not a trained photographer so the photos are like not like the most like decorative artsy but um, half most of the photos I'm just like in my kitchen counter here standing up on the counter and just like taking <laughs> the red shots I mean that's like all I could do at the time so yeah, so um, very, very grateful for the people that have supported me and still continue to support me. So thank you so much. Awesome. Good. I mean, fantastic. I mean, these are the stories that we love to seek because they have so much value beyond just the actual book. It, what goes behind the scenes and what goes behind the whole um, mindset? And uh, it resonates with all of us. So bravo. And there is something nice about having a tangible actual physical book in your hands and, uh, and yeah that's what I was it, yeah there's nothing like it i mean as technology goes forward it, it might be going away i don't know but uh, there definitely is a need in my opinion for for a physical beautiful colorful uh, so, book with nice photography and nice design so basically what we're saying is that every household or at least greek american household needs a copy mm -hmm. of the book on their copy. all households okay all household. okay you got it <laughs> but, uh, everyone needs to tell everybody tell your friends so <laughs> let's get to the fun stuff as far as you know tonight's uh segment eleni has two recipes that she's going to demonstrate for us which i'm a big fan of both 
Um, one is one of the classics that I grew up with as a kid, especially during the winter time. Um, let us tell us the two recipes that you're going to actually demonstrate for us tonight. Yeah. So um, first, we're going to start with quinoa, so macaroni and quinoa. Um, so it's a meat sauce with spaghetti for anyone else or any kind of noodle that you really like. Um, I'm using pasticcio noodles for mine. You can use penne pasta, rigatoni, whatever you really want. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, it's also comfort food. I love it. I love a meat sauce. Um, and then I'm also making Tito Kaftadi, which is a feta dip that's spicy, or I like it spicy. You can also keep it kind of mellow. Um, I throw in any kind of hot peppers that's around. So that's all obviously to your taste. So those two dishes to kind of kick things off, kind of like a warm dish, kind of cold out and warm dishes, spicy dishes. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be making today. Excellent. And then um, as we're, as you're demonstrating the, the recipes, when they come to completion, we're gonna revisit the dishes uh, together with the wines that we paired and show yourself and our folks, you know, how much better, in my opinion, food is with wine. Yeah. I'm excited. Excellent. I'm excited to have these wines nearby. We're going to be cooking with this wine, by the way. We can talk about you, that. You're using that one in those meat sauce, you said. All right. So awesome. the first recipe, Eleni, we're going to kick off is, is the macaroni with quima. Yes. And really quick, um, just for the audience sake, I, I don't know who's cooking along or or if, if there's anyone, can we get maybe like a little hand? And, or if they have any questions, feel free to throw in the chat and then Yes. you already can send it my way but i'm not sure how many people are going to be cooking along or just want a demonstration but and we're gonna we're gonna uh, allow and rec and encourage everyone to send their messages through the chat and then towards the end in, uh, of the segment we can open up our um the the videos and we can have a q a with you with all of our guests that might want to ask you questions directly that, right? that's that's when we get rowdy oh, no. that's, when, that's when the party starts yeah yeah <laughs> okay, so like I said, we're going to start with the quima. So on our stove, sorry, I'll have to be moving the camera on a little bit because everything's going to be over there today. So no um, I'm going to kind of like bring this over here and then I'll bring it over as we go. So we're going to start on the, on the stove. So I have, I'm doubling the recipe today because I'm cooking for my family. And so usually we'll have like a pound and a half of ground beef, but today I'm going to double it. So don't mind me. So first we have our, our, our pan, our soft pan here, and we're going to put the meat in it, brown it. And then as it's browning, you're going to break it up into chunks. So that's what we're going to start with. Eleni, do you have a, do you have a choice of what meat you recommend? Um, I use beef, um, hamburger, hamburger beef, or you can, some people use turkey. If you want like a leaner meat, you can definitely use that. Okay. Um, you can use ground lamb. Um, I, I like the beef. It has a more fatty flavor. So totally. I, I wanted also to quickly ask you, do, do you end up cooking for your family all the time now? They're like, you're the one with the cookbook. So you cook. Yeah. <laughs> no, they should cook. No, my, my parents cook a lot. Um, right. I, yeah, I, I do. I, I like to, I enjoy it. So especially as I'm testing out recipes, that's when I cook a lot more. So well, are they waiting right now for you to finish things so they can eat? Yeah, yeah. They're like, come on. Oh, that's okay. okay, so to the saucepan, I'm going to add oil and my beef, and I'm going to um, pound that out to kind of just like break up the pieces. Okay. Eleni, do you mind if I uh, throw out any questions that come in while you're doing that? Here. Uh, somebody asked, if you use lamb, would you use the same spices? Mm. Yeah. I, I would. Um, so I'll kind of got, kind of talk about those spices. I would use the same. Everything is to your taste, really. Um, so salt, pepper, oregano are like my my go to seasonings. But then with beef and things like that, or anytime I make a sauce, I also use cinnamon. So this is something that Maya would do. She puts a lot of cinnamon in her like sauces and meats and things like that. So we're gonna use cinnamon. Um, maybe with lamb, you can maybe take that out if you don't like that kind of flavor, but salt, pepper, oregano is all you really need for those kinds of things. Yeah, and you, you know, I, I noticed the fact that you mentioned cinnamon and I noticed that a lot of recipes that come from the islands of Greece tend uh -huh. to put cinnamon in a lot of their minced meat. Recipes. Yeah, yeah. So um, my family, my dad's side of the family, he's from Crete. 
Wow. So um, kind of there's a there's a town called Gavalahori close to Hanya. So yeah, I've always liked that flavor. I mean, you like what you grew up with. So right. I've always grown up with this kind of flavors. So it's um, it's interesting that uh, as Greeks, though regionally, our yeah. dishes vary so much uh, depending where you come from. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So and a lot of northern Greece, they definitely use more like heavy spices, um, like like in their meat sauces and things like that. So I'm gonna set this down really quick so I can use two hands. Um, I'm, just gonna be, I'm just gonna be um, put the meat out a little bit just to break it up. All we're gonna be doing is breaking up into little chunks. Okay. And then we'll season it. After, after you break it up into little chunks, season with salt, pepper, oregano, and cinnamon. Go heavy on the seasonings. Don't under salt, um, don't under season ever. Right. Okay? <laughs> Uh, also, you should tell your dad that uh, my mom's from uh, Hanya, so maybe we're related somewhere distantly. Oh, really? What? Um, so in Hanya, or is it yeah. in Hanya? Right in Hanya. Okay. Have you been? Oh yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. So yeah. maybe you guys might be cousins. What? You might be cousins then. I know. Like, I, aren't we all? Aren't we all? all at some cousins. at some point, aren't we all cousins? Yes. Probably. Um, <laughs> and by the way, uh, Eleni, the question about the lamb was, was from Karen. Uh huh. What was the question? The the if you use the lamb, would you use the same spices? Yeah, I would use salt, pepper, oregano, and then if you want to add a dash of cinnamon, I think that really brings out meat flavors. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can definitely do that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna season with salt, pepper, and oregano. And then I'll kind of show you what the meat's looking like. And I'm assuming Greek oregano, right? Yes. Look, <laughs> of course, if, it, if it's jarred like this. and it, <laughs> it got smuggled in through the airport, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So we have oregano in our garden. Um, I need oh, cool. to be better at um, harvesting it, but oh, nice. if we couldn't go, usually we'll bring back like a bunch of a bunch of spices but so salt pepper oregano go heavy on the seasonings and then as we go and taste the sauces always we'll taste it and i'll kind of guide you through that and then we'll also um talk about all of that so you, do you go do you go by a specific time frame or you're just eyeing it as it gets brown is there a method um, yeah so right now i'm just browning it so i'll show you i'm going to bring this in a little bit yep so I'm just gonna brown it a little bit with the seasoning and then we're gonna add the salt, I mean the onions and garlic. Okay. Just wanna get all that kind of cooked in a little bit. And I'm gonna bring this over here and kind of show you. So mm -hmm. kind of chunk, bring those into chunks, chunk them down a little bit, probably break it down just a little bit more. I could almost smell I it. Feel like I can smell it. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know some some things you like think about and you can you can bring in that mm, the the, smell. The, the yeah. Sense. Yes. Do you have a favorite? Do you guys have a favorite Greek dish? Oh God, oh, that's literally the most difficult question. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, what would you say, Fati? You know, um, can you pick one top three? I don't know. Yeah, that's hard. It changes by the season too. Like in the summer, I just want like fresh vegetables. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah, well, yeah. In our household, as kids growing up, winter time, it was always, you know, on the weekends was either pasticcio, moussaka, uh, dolmades, whether they were with cabbage or with, you know, grapevine leaves. Um, you know, the macaroni with quinoa was, was huge. Um, you know, patates with cotas to furno was always a big thing. Oh, that one's good. Right with lemonatis patates, lamb shank was also. Um, How did you have you ever had kleptukol? I uh, well, yes, not as often as I wanted to, but yeah. You know, when I you know we used to go out and dine in New York City, I often found kleptukol in more uh, menus than I did before. But yeah, I enjoy that dish as well. So, you know, you, you just asked that simple question, Eleni, and it just made me realize how important your cookbook and these types of cookbooks are because it's like my mom passed away. And ever since she passed away, like that kind of connection to that Greek food, like, mm -hmm. you know, has been more distant from me and it's sad. Yeah. 
And, you know, you just asked Cliff to go. And I was like, oh, my God, I haven't had it since, like, my mom was alive. And it's like, yeah, it's so really, you really need these yeah. types of cookbooks. And it's really great that you did something like that to connect, you know, the, the younger generations that maybe don't have that old Greek grandmother or old Greek mom from, from Greece uh, making these things. Yeah, or to, like, push them to do that. You know, talk with your grandparents if they're still around, put your parents, write them yeah. down. Because once they're gone they're gone you know like even just like they can write it down but doing it with them is like a totally different thing like when I was working with like um Ayaya it's like she I would just be like hey like give me your recipe and then like the recipe that she has versus what she does is so different so you have to like actually do it with them as everyone knows okay so all right so the meat is browned nice. um so it's bring, it's putting bringing off some fat which is good we're keeping that fat into the dish and so now we're gonna add the onions and garlic mm. so I have chopped onions dice them and add that in so it's, think, a, it's important that you do that you add that after the meat has browned with this i do sometimes i'll i'll do the onions and garlic and all that first it depends on what i'm making but with the beef I like to do that so the so the beef gets browned because we, if, if I do it before, um, it's it's gonna overcook the onions and then the and the meat doesn't brown how I want it to. And then I'm adding lots of garlic. I always go more than <laughs> sometimes even more than I say in my own recipes. I'm like, you know what? Throw another clove in. You know, <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. Honestly, so now we're just gonna stir that in. Sorry for the bad filming. I'm not. I don't have like a great system of yeah. <laughs> ask dad to help you right now i know i know okay, hold this i need someone just to be like right there holding it yeah he could throw in some uh some some trivia while we're at it yeah uh we yeah. got another question if uh, yeah. i could ask you yes oh wait hold on let me let me find this and then we're actually but it's gonna be throwing in the wine in in a minute okay um a quick question was what's your most popular recipe in your recipe book or your blog my most popular on my blog. Okay. So probably my, okay. So my top one is probably some people call it orzo or kritaraki. Mm. And that comes from my, yeah, she, that was like my most popular one. And then my mom's rice pudding. That's mm -hmm. the one that skyrocketed everything. Um, also fuck yes are actually quite popular, which is yeah. surprising, mm. but just like a standard one that, you know, standard recipe for the year. I'm pouring wine because I'm going to be pouring this into the dish. Have a sip first. Before yeah, for every pour, you got to sip. Uh, let's make sure we, yeah. Cheers, cool. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. How do you like it? I'm going to put more into it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's called the Foti method. Yeah. yeah. For every uh, ounce that goes into a recipe, you have to drink two ounces. <laughs> okay, okay i like it i like it so i've heard been watching so the wine is optional but i think with sauces and things like that meat sauces especially adds a nice flavor um i'm gonna add that before i add any tomato sauce just to let that simmer in it so i'm adding the wine into mm. the meat sauce it might even add some more later you never know <laughs> this is how i you know a little bit of this a little of that so i'm gonna let that Cook into the meat, and then I'm going to add a little bit more once the onions cook just a little bit more. Then I'll add a little bit more wine, and then we'll add the tomato sauce and let that simmer. Mm, okay. So, um, are there any kind of questions? I'm going to just open up the so um, tomato sauces really quick as we're chatting. Sure. So somebody somebody made a comment that yes. Ari, you should have flown out there to work the camera. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. Well, okay. I mean, okay. yeah, I could have maybe. Uh, yeah, and by time. the way, she is adorable and this is excellent. So you have, you have a nice oh, compliment there from thank you. that KMS. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Your fan club. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. <laughs> and, so yeah. like for, for someone that doesn't really cook, um, you know, you think of these dishes and it seems when you like, if you want to attempt it, they seem so overwhelming, mm -hmm. but just if you were in, we're into this about 10 minutes and it's, you're, you're breaking it down. So easy. It's like within 10 minutes, you just prepared uh, the components of the meat sauce with, minus the sauce that you're going to put in, into it right yeah. now. But we're going to throw on some sauce. Really think about it. Like 
within 15 minutes or so, you know, you've got your meat sauce ready. Right. right? Yes. Yeah, so um, Greek cooking isn't supposed to be like overly complicated, you know? Um, and, and, and then if you think of like the basics, so if I use this kind of uh, meat sauce, same yep. thing I'm going to use that for pasticcio, like how to make a meat sauce or like a stew. There's always the basic steps to get there. So it doesn't have to be over, overly complicated if we just know like the basics right. of doing it. I mean, sometimes you think about it, you know, you know, it takes us 45 minutes to an hour to do takeout. Where? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. By the time you get your better, healthier you're for you, speaking right? from my nutrition background, much better. Okay, <laughs> check on the saw on the meat. So basically, I want the onions to kind of cook down just a little bit before I add my tomato sauce. Um, just so I'm not eating the, too much raw. So Any recommendation on what type of tomato sauce? Does it matter? Yeah, so I use both, um, I'm gonna throw in tomato sauce and diced tomatoes. I don't have, I just use a standard, like, I don't know, tomato sauce. Okay, we yeah. have here. Um, you can just only use tomato sauce or I like to throw in a little diced tomatoes just because I like that chunky element. Mm -hmm. Some people will just only use like tomato sauce or tomato paste. But like I said, I like a, like a little bit of chunks. Oh. And tomato sauce. Now that you mentioned that, that reminds me, I remember my mom used to use tomato paste back in the days. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and they broke it down with a little water. I don't, I didn't understand. Yeah. That. So you need to break down tomato paste with water. So some of my recipes all have that. Um, this one, I just don't, this is how I've always done it. Um, mm -hmm. And it'll bring out the tomato paste will bring out the sauces from the pan or like anything that's kind of sticking and that water will, and it'll kind of thicken up a sauce as well. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely, yeah, definitely throw in some tomato paste. Okay, so I'm gonna throw in, like I said, I'm doubling this. So I'm adding um, double of everything. So some tomato sauce is going right into there. And I just- So you say you're doubling, oh, you, sh you, you should have worn, wear an apron. But anyways. I should, yeah, should have worn an apron. That's for my life, it's all right. Okay, so, so really quick, I'm also gonna add water. So what, so what a little trick is, I didn't write this in my book, but I should have a little tip is, yeah. Yeah, I always think of things after, you know, oh, I should have done this. Um, I fill up some water into these just like gets the remains of the tomato sauce. It's something that um, my, uh, she was from, my, uh, she was from, um, grew up in the Great Depression era. So everything she did was to save, to right. save everything, you Use know, every, every like, remnant. Yeah. So nothing goes to waste. Yeah. Nothing yeah. Goes to waste. So how much of the can do you fill? I'm going to fill up um, half of this and then put it in. So this will be about a cup and what I really want into the sauce. And it's just going to add more of the, okay. of the sauce. Yeah. Or you can fill it up with wine if you want all just straight wine. That's totally up to you <laughs> and how you roll. That's nice. if Fatih nice. was cooking. Nice. Now you're talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I'm just going to stir this in here. So got some. So now that we kind of got all of our elements into this, Yep. Um, I'm actually have one more thing of tomato sauce. We're gonna let that simmer, and I'm going to add a little bit more of the seasoning, so salt, pepper, oregano, cinnamon, and we're just gonna let this all simmer together, and then we'll work on our next recipe as it simmers. Mm. Um, with any kind of sauce, stew, soups like that, you want it to, to to cook slow. I'm not a fan of like cooking anything like super fast just because it creates better flavor and also really quick stir from the bottom, get anything that might've stuck like the meat or the onions. Mm -hmm. um, it could, because the flavors will, will um, come together the longer they sit. So I'm a fan of, now I'm seasoning everything again with more seasoning of cooking things slow. So you and, say you can let it simmer, Eleni. Uh, and yeah. Is there a time frame in your mind that you're thinking of when you say you're going to let it simmer? So I'm going to let it simmer for about 30 minutes, 20, okay. 30 minutes. And um, I'm going to put the pot, I'm going to put the lid on and it'll kind of. Um, and it's on low heat. Yep. I'm going to put it on like medium, low to medium. So on mine, every, of uh, every oven's different or every stove is different. So I'm at like a three to two to three to four for right now and then i might go a little bit lower cool so yeah throwing in sorry i'm doing one hand and doing this some more oregano salt pepper and looks cinnamon. good uh, a couple questions if you yeah. Yeah, can, 
can I make the meat sauce a day in advance? Totally. It's going to yeah. be, yeah. yeah. So, so sometimes when I'm in the mood to really cook, I'll do like triple batches of things like this and you can freeze it too. So this freezes well. So like any kind of quick meal, like at, at night or whatever, when you're like, I have nothing, I mean, Oh, I have quinoa. I can like just have that with some spaghetti, whatever. Mm. So I'm going to put this lid on it and just kind of like halfway or sleep out just a little bit. Mm. So you can cook it a day in advance, just reheat it because the oils and the meats kind of will coagulate a little bit or harden. Mm -hmm. So just kind of reheat. You can add more liquid to kind of bring it back together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I do that often. I think that's a great way to yeah. have meals. So, also, um, another question. Are you working on a new cookbook? <laughs> um, I, I'm not currently. I have, I have it in my head, basically. <laughs> yeah so it's where it's a it's a work in progress in my head i just need to get things onto paper i have what eleni's trying what eleni's trying to say is that she's going to announce it on greek wine club when she's ready yeah, yeah basically <laughs> no i am um, i've always wanted to just um to be honest i was after my first one i i kept writing a little bit after and then I had this lofty goal. I was like, I can write a book next year, 2020, I'm not doing anything. Everyone's locked down. But then I just kind of felt very overwhelmed and I just couldn't do it. But now I'm like in the zone of like, you know, I want to do it. I will do it. And we might have a cookbook this year if I can get my mm. text in line. Yeah. I know a good online platform for you to sell it on. Oh, and what is that? <laughs> uh, it's a, a little app called Greek Azad. <laughs> let's hear about let's hear about it as we uh we'll, we'll, we'll tell more this is this is your time to cook now okay, okay, okay. Don't, okay. don't worry about us okay. okay um for anyone that might be cooking let me know if you have any questions basically like i said we are just going to be putting um the sauce on the stove let the kind of cook and then make sure you're stirring occasionally from the bottom so nothing sticks and we're just gonna let that sauce thicken Okay. and there's a spaghetti. quick that? question um is that a briki on your stove and is there a recipe in your cookbook for greek coffee yeah <laughs> um yeah so can we see yeah so i have a i have a few here actually right. um, this one is from my this one it's an old one that's oh, it's really this one is from my dad's papu so that one's nice and old. This one's kind of newer. Yeah, a few of those. And we have a recipe in my book for Greek coffee. And I have a few drinks, just like a frappe and coffee. And I have another one, Uzito, you guys might like for your it's cocktail. Oh. Yeah, Uzo Mojito. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh, that, that, <laughs> save that one for another demo because yeah. we got we to gotta get into that one. Yeah, we need a, we need a summer um, summer meal and cocktail would be really good all right well the the folks here have heard it first eleni's coming back for a a, a nice summer uzito yes so really <laughs> quick, um i'm going to just set up the we're going to be again at the stove i need to show that ahead of time but we're going to be at the stove a lot today to start with the tito coptity and then it'll be right here mm. so again just going to bring this down as we cook I'm a big fan of Tiro Kaftiri. I mean, over the years, it's become a part of so many like meze platters. That's like, it's a must. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. It's so good. Um, and it, you can spice it up however you like. You can go hot, you can go mild, you can go mm. whatever. It's always kind of different depending on what you have. Yeah. So I'm just going to show you. I already kind of cut the peppers. So what I like to do is saute the peppers a little bit to kind of get some heat. Oh. And some oil. So I have, I have a combination today of like um, sweet peppers. So I just use bell peppers and then they, these are red jalapenos. Mm. I have a green jalapeno too, just add a different type of color. So I don't think I've seen a red jalapeno before. <laughs> I know, but basically just something that's set out a little bit longer, I guess, okay. is what I get from that. Um, so yeah, with this, you can just use depending on your spice level. You can use only sweet peppers. Uh, I've seen that with maybe some chili flakes because Greeks really don't eat a lot of spicy. Um, so 
I like a lot of heat, so I put in jalapenos and chili flakes and all that. Hey, Lenny, do we know is there is there an origin or roots of where tiro cafeteria came from? Um, I am not sure. I want to say it was more northern Greece, like um. Where there's a lot of peppers. Yeah, I want to. I want to say that. I don't know okay. for sure. Yeah. We'll have Ari look into that. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know that whole but origin. Yeah. But but you mentioned that you're using a variety of different peppers. You're using a combination of sweet and hot or spicy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I and um there's two different types of Tito Kaftidi that I've seen in Greece. One's red, one's white. And basically what they do is use different types of peppers. So mm -hmm. with my red one, this is my red Tito Kaftidi. I'm using all red peppers plus green to add a little bit of pop because I like to just kind of pop my mm -hmm. my dishes. And then when you use the white Tito Kaftidi, they use more like in Greece, it's easier to make that because they have like more like white peppers and they'll use more feta and yogurt and things like that. Um, so yeah, there's two different types. Nice. And but I never knew. They like more mild peppers. So here we have a little more variety of spice. Awesome. Especially in Utah. <laughs> I was gonna ask you uh, randomly, like, wh what's the what's the growing weather like in uh, Salt Lake City? Great. Like, can, uh, do you have a good garden for for. Yeah, so we have. Um, I'll have to show you one day a little tour in the garden or something like that. We have. Oh, that that would make a great. That'll make a great segment, by the way. So yeah, we should definitely yeah. do that. Yeah. Right now we have garlic we planted in, in October going. And we'll have tomato, and I we plant tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, all that. Um, yeah, I think. Okay, our, you're, you're legit. You you legit are growing stuff. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really fun. I've been doing that with my dad. He started getting me into it, and then last year I kind of went for it, and I I love doing it. So it's very relaxing. Yeah. Maybe you can send us some of your. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we jarred we jarred some salsa this year. So. Oh yeah come on send yeah do you like salsa yeah so we did we did all that but i'm asking you on camera so you can't say no and you can't back out <laughs> okay okay yeah, it's on, on paper yeah shoot that's okay, right. we'll do it. okay couple so questions if uh if i could ask real quick how many recipes are in your cookbook so i have about 70 and then also the book is um it's called all you can greek food, life, and travel. So like I said before, I, I felt compelled to write this because I felt um, my generation and myself was kind of getting disconnected from Greece. And so there's a whole section about travel. Um, you can find, I took a poll um, a couple of years ago from my Instagram followers where your, where your favorite beaches are. So there's a whole section like top 30 beaches to visit in Salt Lake. There's a map, you can kind of um, see that. And then I have a whole section about Crete because that's like where I'm, I'm from a few different regions in Greece, but that's kind of where my, my roots kind of pull the hardest, you know, so I, I have a whole section there and monasteries. Um, so yeah, there's different life and there's travel. And then this end section, I have stuff about life because this, again, I started blogging. And so there's a few, there's a few um, entries there that were very like, meaningful to me that I felt like I needed to put into the book that kind of has a Greek connection. Like there's a whole section about self-love, which um, in Greek is called philoftia. So I have a whole like little write-up about that um, because that kind of drove me to actually feel confident to put out a book. So I thought that it was really important to put in. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, well, another question that actually goes with that is, do you catalog your recipes by region or do most of your recipes come from a particular locale? No, so I didn't I didn't have like any specific category. This book specifically was just recipes that I had from like my family or myself or things that I really enjoyed. And it's not very much um, region regional, although I do have a more of a Cretan influence in how I cook. Um, one of my favorite memories in Greece was from a, a Cretan cooking class I took there. And so I just, I just love the style of cooking. It's funny. Um, when I was there, so, so I cook like more, I, although I'm not vegetarian, whatever, I cook more vegetarian style mm -hmm. and that's like the very Cretan of, 
of way of cooking when we were at this cooking class you know domadas they they come here like we think everything has to have meat in them and maybe mm -hmm. things like that and so we were cooking and so people that had been familiar with domadas or, or kind of somewhat not everyone was greek at the cooking class we were making the domadas and like doing the filling and someone was like when are we putting the meat in <laughs> and the her name was eleni she was like she was a, she was the host and she was like meat no 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 we don't put meat in our domadas like and so I have a recipe for um, domadas without meat. I, although I do like it, but mm -hmm. that's definitely my influence is Cretan style for sure. Nice. Can't go wrong with the Cretans. Yeah, baby. yeah. They they sure know how to. <laughs> they sure know how to cook. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. All right. So why don't we get a uh, the uh, so you've got the peppers going for the tiro uh, no, yeah. So I'm about to put them on the pan. So I'm gonna heat the pan and I'm gonna put a little bit of oil. We have our, we're going to grill the peppers or saute them with some chili flakes and that's it. Let them cool. And we just grind them up in a food processor. It just comes together so quickly. So let me kind of show you here, bring this back over here with my peppers. My station kind of got all this stuff. Sorry. Mm. Okay. So we're going to add olive oil to our pan. Greek olive oil. Always, yes. Actually, have you heard of the, um, this is from Olio Sofia. That's a company in Greece that I got mine from. Okay. They sent me some, so nice. I had to use Absolutely. that. My mom was gonna hold this, great. Okay, that's why I got from moms, yeah. Okay, so. I got it. from moms. Yeah, okay. Bring that down a little bit. Okay, so we're just gonna add, it's a nonsense pan. So peppers to, the pan. I'm not gonna try to overcrowd it. So I'll do this in batches. And when you do saute uh, peppers, do they bring out a little more sweetness in the vegetable? It when brings out the heat, yeah. Um, but it does bring out the flavor of the sweet pepper too, and you just get the sweet and the heat from it. So mm -hmm. I'm also gonna add some chili flakes to it. Yep. And we're just gonna let that, it just kind of nicely get a little bit cooked. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna let that cool. And we're gonna, I'm gonna bring my food processor over here to kind of show you what we're gonna do. So really quick, I'm going to add um, just the feta first and then I'll add the peppers once it's cooled. So food processor, or you can use whatever you have, or you can use a blender, anything that, anything that you have really. So, okay. okay. So with our feta, we are going to use about a cup here, two cups. And so I have the doni feta that I picked from the market today. Nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's my favorite. That we can get here, you know. I was gonna say that it's great that you can get out, you know, out and as if. Like, <laughs> what are you saying? There, out where you <laughs> what are, are you saying, Fati? Yeah, what are you saying? <laughs> it's I'm tough to get out of this mindset. I don't know. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, you you have that that like uh, conceited uh, big city uh, Boston. Not, uh, not conceited. Yeah. It's just like get it out there. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know like other things. Exist. Eleni, do you have running water out there? <laughs> yeah, hardly. No, I, I actually fetch it from the from the neighbor. Yeah, the, yeah you guys go old school. Yeah, yeah. But nice outhouse, by well, the way. Yeah, I noticed. So the because yeah, so our power built, our power's gonna go off soon. So. <laughs> so a question one of our our guests has that just wanted to repeat the brand of the feta that you're using is Dodonis. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, I'm using Dodonis. Uh, Dodonis feta. Yeah. Always use good quality ingredients yep. as you can. Feta right now is hard to find because everyone, have you heard of this freaking feta trend, feta baked pasta? Yeah. yeah what's yeah, up with it's hard to find feta just for, to have feta. And I couldn't That's find it. It was like everywhere was like sold out. I was like, what the heck? I, I actually use this stuff regularly, people. So yeah, so I use Adoni. And I, you can get it from a market like this or um, 
here's I guess you can use that too. I have another we have another box in the fridge too, like this. So yeah, this is what I use. Nice. Awesome. Not a paid advertisement unless they want to sponsor me. I'll take it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, somebody uh Joanna commented you can find it at Market Basket for the Boston people. Oh, okay, there you go. You know, you guys don't have supermarkets out in Utah, so you wouldn't understand. No, like, yeah, we have sheep. <laughs> yeah, so we just get the goats, sheep, things like that. Um, well, I we, wonder. We, someone... we, have tra- we have a good trading uh, routine out here. Yeah. I give them salsa, and they give me... They didn't, they didn't get the U.S. dollar yet, so they trade. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay, so um, what I did here is I just kind of push these in chunks just makes it easier this is about two cups of feta put it in chunks and then we're gonna add the peppers i'm gonna get, i'm just gonna flip them real quick and so you can kind of see here just to kind of get a nice little i don't need the hand mother mama i need a, i need a hand <laughs> Okay, okay. Just gonna get both sides just kind of. Yep. A What's your mom's name so we could credit her in the credits here? Paula. Paula. She probably, she probably, yeah, she's. <laughs> and Utah's the best place to live. Oh, very nice. <laughs> it is. It's very nice. It's... What do you think about that, Foti? I think we need to like take a trip out there, especially during their festival. Yeah, <laughs> we have a very we have a very big festival actually. Um, it's yeah, huge. especially like the biggest in the mount in the west of the Mississippi. So anyone's oh, wow. welcome post COVID. That's awesome. I yeah, we definitely would love that. Okay, so I'm just gonna this another minute, and then we will get going. Oh, my dad conveniently brought out this is the salsa that we made. Have oh anyone- yes, very chunky. We use a lot of peppers. Again, I love hot foods. Yes. This is very spicy. Mm. Oh, that looks so good. Thank you. Are there any other questions before I... Oh, let me look. Let me look. Uh, Wisconsin cow... F- Wisconsin cow fat all the way? I don't know what <laughs> that means, but that was a comment. And I'm oh. not fully in agreement with that. Because <laughs> oh. first of all, cow fat is not feta. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, so, unfortunately, that comment, I think it's because um, domestic feta made such a big uh, impact because of all the Greek owned pizzerias in the New England area that needed feta in that volume. So, well, I'm, j- I, I'm very I'm, I'm a stickler about this and cow feta to me is not feta. So, uh, yeah. you know, well, yeah. I, I hate to break it to you, but a lot of feta, really quick, like I said constantly stir your meat sauce we're also making that in case anyone forgot i'm just gonna stir yes that yes yeah <laughs> just disregard me fighting with the audience Don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay okay so i'm gonna turn off this can yep cool just a little bit and then we're going to use everything from the pan, every all the oil that accumulated because that's going to have some more heat too. Throw that in the pan or in the in the food processor yeah. and mix everything up. We're also going to add yogurt. That's going to add a little creaminess into it and some vinegar as well, a little splash of vinegar. And that's all you really need for this. It's very, very easy. And like I said, you can make this however you would like. You can, um, or spicy, hot. You can add bell pepper, or I use bell peppers for sweetness. You can add like those pepper teenies also work. Oh, okay. Those are also great options. Serranos, if you're feeling even spicier, anything. So Spicy is better, people. If you don't want spicier, it's, you're missing out. Miss- spicy is well, good. Listen, Eleni, the spicier it is, the more wine we're going to drink. There right. yeah. you go. Cool you gotta cool it down. Yeah, you convinced me. Okay, we're gonna add everything in here and we're gonna it's gonna get loud, so we'll just see how that yeah. It can't be any louder than Ari. You're gonna what? What? It can't be any louder than you, Ari. 
So we're putting all these peppers in here. Ah, oh, look good. And then, and then the oil as well that accumulated from the pan. And the and the remnants of the oil will go in the in there as well. And my shirt too. Yes. Nice. It'll, it'll go anywhere you really want it. Yes, and the oil, and we'll add more oil um, to it as well, just to get the yep. um, texture going. Just kind of being careful. I should have worn this one, but be nice for my first show. Okay, so we have our peppers, and I'm going to add yogurt. This homemade Greek yogurt. Homemade. Oh, very oh. nice. So feta and yogurt. Yeah, so the yogurt adds a nice creamy texture to it. I'm going to add more as we go, and my lid is right here. Okay, we're going to get loud here for a second. <laughs> Reach though. <laughs> Okay. And vinegar. We need some vinegar. Oh, okay. Splash. Ah, very nice. Red wine vinegar. And then here you can also add more chili flakes if you feel so inclined. I technically should have done some batches, but. That was a nice mixture right there. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And we're done. <laughs> Oil and loosen things up. Yeah. And we're going, and we're live. And just let this go really quick. We're just going to let this go. Add more oil as you need, um, more yogurt as you need, and we'll taste it in a second. <laughs> That sounded very much like Fati when he sips wine. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more yogurt. Just kind of adds a little bit more creamy texture. All the measurements are on that link that you sent everyone. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. So if you want this um, a little bit, a little bit less salty or a little more creamy, then you'd add more yogurt. It kind of tones down the saltiness from the feta. So that's where the yogurt comes in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go back to being loud for one second. <laughs> It's uncanny, Fati, how much that sounds like you're sipping wine. Okay, that's how, and that's how easy it is. So I'm just gonna kind of make sure the texture is there and the flavor. At what point are you gonna taste it? Right now. Oh. <laughs> needs more heat. Hmm, ready there, push that. Needs a little more heat, I think. So I'm gonna add a little bit more chili flakes. Oh. And a little bit more um, wine or uh, red wine vinegar, too, and then we have it. So yeah, you can add more chili flakes. I didn't add a lot to the pan. And then uh, Eleni, when your massive piece is done with the tirokafteri, what do you like to serve it with? I like to use I'll use pita chips, or I have some um, I have some bread I'm going to use. Vegetables okay. are also great. You can. Honestly, this will go in anything. You can have it in your fridge and put it on hamburgers. Great option. Mm. Uh, okay. Meats, it's really good. I don't see anything. Like, Tito Cup is underrated, in my opinion. Like, move over I to agree. 
think anymore. I'm just gonna be really, really quick, really uh, quick on this. Go for it. <laughs> I'm going to leave this as is, by the way, when we do the podcast. So just the audio, because that sound is awesome. I love that sound. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> good. Okay, so this is kind of, I'm going to, all the edges I need to scoop around, but this is kind of how it looks like reddish orange, just because the oils. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'll put this into a bowl so it doesn't look so bad. But um, yeah, that's how easy it comes together right into a food processor super quick so tasty tasty and that's right, it so you have, that's you don't have to i'm gonna cut up some bread and we'll have that with the wine and then i'm gonna start on my pasta really quick so this is how fast things move okay. let me put this into a bowl so now okay. you got you got your you might simmering there almost done and now you're gonna boil your pasta. Right. Yes, I'll show you what pasta I'm using as well. And let me put that into a bowl. Yeah. So maybe now we can kind of talk. Do you want do you want to talk about the wines sure. and then get things? Absolutely. Going? I think after that everything will come together really, really quickly. Right. So you broke down the uh, the components of each dish. Let's talk about the tiro kifteri and the fact that we actually um, are going to sip uh, rosé with tiro kifteri because we're coming up with what are we going to have with these two recipes. So the tiro kifteri has elements of saltiness from the feta and it's got the heat from the peppers and um, it's got, you know, light textures with the creaminess of the yogurt. So what came to mind right away was to pair a rosé from Greece. Uh, and for those of us that are either a just getting into rosés or haven't had rosés, they're definitely something that you need to try. I think I turned Ariane to rosé not too long ago because he had a difficult time getting past the color of it, right? <laughs> no, it was just, it was just, a, you know, it's a little light. Uh... You don't want to be seen drinking a pink drink is what I'm trying to do. No, you uh, obviously you don't know me because my whole life my friends used to make fun of me for drinking like malibu pineapples and alabama <laughs> slammers and stuff like that so that wasn't an issue for me all right fine fair enough but <laughs> going back to the reason why we chose um a, a dry, this is a dry rosé so on often enough i'm gonna cut bread while you're doing that so we yeah, can yeah absolutely uh, rosés are mistaken uh, often enough to be sweet because for the last 20 years a lot of folks have been drinking uh, white Zinfandel or sweeter wines that were uh, that were in pink in color. So uh, we want to make sure that we reference that we're having a dry rosé. Rosés, just real quickly, they're actually wines that are made from red grapes, right? And what happens in the process is that when they ferment uh, the grapes to make rosé, they leave the skins in for a very short time, for about an hour or two, maybe a little more during fermentation. So that just enough contact for the skins to extract the color to the juice, and then they remove the skins. And that's when you get this beautiful uh, light blush Hold color. Hold it in front of you. Yeah, right there. Okay. So um, they drink light, crisp. They're slightly acidic. They, they're slightly citrusy. Um, and the one that we chose today is a rosé called Milonas, a winery at the key. And I felt that this would be a good pairing with Eleni's uh, Tiro Cafeteri. So Eleni's going to also crack it open. And she's going to sip on the Milona Rosé while she has her Tiro Cafeteri. And might I say, Eleni, you are very disciplined to hold that Rosé all this time to sip it for the first time with us. Right. And very I was, impressive. I want to drink with you guys. I was like, I don't. <laughs> my family like saw this like coming in and was like oh when are we gonna have this it's like not until i cook uh, it and <laughs> day. yeah we're cooking so well, again uh rosés are great all all year round you know they're they're more summery but you know they're very versatile so you can have rosés with pretty much anything you can have them with fish salads you can have them with meat pork um 
it's so they're so underrated but we want to take these opportunities during our segments to kind of showcase you know what else is out there that people don't know of that they can try and rosé happens to be that category yeah well thank you for this one i'm excited so just keep in mind eleni salty and heat okay. from the food and then dry and citrus say um, that again I would never have known that, honestly, with the salty, with the rosé. That's yeah, yeah. So, so the so here here's the dynamics of pairing food with wine. It's yeah. all about the seasoning and the cooking methods. Wait, when you say heat, do you mean like spiciness, spice. or do you yeah. mean like actual temperature? No, the spice. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so we're talking when when we use the word heat with food or recipes, we're we're, we're referencing the hotness of the food, right? The, the spice. Okay. But uh, uh, somebody asked Fati, what temp to serve the rosé? So rosé should be served at the same temperature as white wine. So uh, typically cold, right? And here's a, here's a tip real quickly about, you know, re refrigerated wines, whether they're white, cold, you know, often enough, we keep our whites in the refrigerator that's gauged at about 37 degrees, which is pretty cold. And in the, in the U S we are accustomed to drinking white wine very cold because it's refreshing and it feels good. But at that temperature though, white wine, um, it's too cold for wine in general. And what happens is 37 degrees or 40 degrees suppresses a lot of the flavors and the aromas. So even though it feels good to drink white wine, you're not really getting the true flavors until it comes to temperature. So when, it, when white wine warms up, you're getting more aromas, you're getting more flavor. So ideally, if you, you know, if you, when you pull your white wine or rosé out of the refrigerator, wait about 30 minutes if you have the patience for it and then have a sip of your wine. It'll be more flavorful. Mm. So back to the question is rosé should be served at the same temperature as white wine. But again, everything's personal preference. These are just recommendations. So going back, you know, with Eleni's um, point is that food pairings it's all about the seasoning in the food and the structure of the wine so salty foods call for dry wines mm -hmm. so what happens is the saltiness and the dryness in wine cancel each other out and what happens then is that you are able to marry flavors where you can keep the flavor of the food while maintaining the flavor of the wine so one is not lost over the other good point just just a very basic quick reference on, on awesome. wine pairing yeah Fati, I concur. Okay, I'm gonna try it really quick. Although the, I'm not ready to eat, but I just wanted to try it with the wine and the Tito Cotta yes. Sorry for anyone not eating. I'm just gonna be. <laughs> we're we're drinking, so. Don't okay. uh, yeah, that's just me and Eleni. You get him to eat all this good I food. He was talking about it. <laughs> oh, and then the wine. This is it. Hey, Cheers. I got a spicy kick. Yeah. That's really, that actually pairs really well. It kind of clears that palate too, I think, right? Yeah, it's, it's, that you know, know it is pretty, it's clean, refreshing. That's a good, that's a good word you brought out, clean. So mm -hmm. a most production in Greece wines are clean and what does that mean that they're made as natural as possible with very limited amounts of intervention there's no artificial additives flavors chemicals unknown agents um, which happens to a lot of wines in the commercial market so the wines are very simple that's what makes them so clean okay and that that's awesome like that that's a great thing uh, and i saw from your reaction eleni unless you are oscar nominated actress like that was a, a legit reaction yeah I'm, I'm actually here for yeah is um nina verdalos on i'm just <laughs> yeah, get my name in there we no should, I, I, we should, I should be, she should be a candidate for the la uh greek film festival yeah yeah, yeah th th this segment is gonna nominate her <laughs> yeah that's what i'm looking for no like what what i emote yeah it's all on the table for me so 
What you see is what you get. <laughs> so really quick, I'm gonna boil the pasta and then everything's gonna come together and we can eat, well, I'll eat and you guys will continue drinking. So I'm just gonna put, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm using, so I'm using the pasta. Oh wait, the other way, flip it over. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There we go. Um, I like to use this for pasito and I really like to use this for any kind of sauce because the, the, the sauce really gets into the noodle and they're fun to eat. They're, they're like slurpy noodles. I don't know. Mm, so, yeah. <laughs> they're fun. Just as we could. So this is what we're going to boil. That's you actually know, Fati's nickname, Slurpy Noodle. Right. So um, Misco <laughs> has been a, a staple in all of our households growing up as kids. It was what? That brand Misco has been, at least for us out here, has been a, a household brand growing up as yeah, young Greek Americans. That uh, the my mom used to use the um, whether it's uh, Manestra or the Orzo mm -hmm. on that brand, and all their different types of pasta. Yeah. All right, we're gonna boil this, and then everything will be ready to go. Again, I want to I want to call out your mom for the excellent camera work. Yeah, she's following you. She's doing everything right. Except I just saw her thumb. So thumbs you up. Watch, you gotta watch that. <laughs> now, Lenny, you boiled the water, but are you seasoning the water before you put your pasta? Or are you doing anything? Um, salt into the pasta water. Yes, water salt, salt. Into the pasta water. Yes. Yes. Did you do that? Yes, but when I eat pasta at Ari's house, it has no flavor because I think he forgets the salt in the water. Yeah, you gotta. What, do, what does someone say? Like you want the you want to taste the sea and the, the salt it like the sea. As as some, I heard someone say one before. With no your, salt in the water. Your pasta. Okay. I yeah. do it on purpose when Fati comes over. Make everything bad. Yeah. 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 But, so he doesn't come over again. Well, what, I think what you <laughs> do is because unless we did something right. It's not salty. I won't drink as much. So I won't drink all your wine. Is that why you do that? there we go we figured it out yeah. all right so you so you got the water boiling you got the yeah, salt in there already yes and i'm gonna check on my sauce and do you have a, like a, a minute uh a time frame for how long you should cook your pasta um with this i would do <laughs> these are thicker noodles this one should be about 15 17 minutes the al dente minutes. okay yeah or whatever the package says too. Every every package is different or pasta. So like when you when you're, when you're not sure, do you like grab a noodle and like try like to yeah, eat I'll it grab it. I don't like it like soggy, um, like al dente, like a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Gummy. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, um, were there any questions about the tito or anything? Um, sauce is almost done. It just. Now I took off the lid and let and let the sauce kind of thicken up a little bit. Mm. And it kind of like hastens the thickening when you take the lid off and then we'll be ready to go. And I also have for the topping, I have grated mazitra. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah. Did you I'll grate it yourself? Um, actually, I had my brother do that today as I was getting ready for things. But Make yes, sure give him credit yeah, we, yeah, we, we got to get we got to give credit to the whole family here. I know it really is a family affair <laughs> here. Where it's like a whole production. So that is that is the absolute <laughs> Greek like, style, right? It there. really is. Get everybody involved. Yeah, my dad sends in the of uh, the <laughs> historical facts. My mom's the camera lady. My brother does something here and there. Love it. Uh, some, somebody just asked, what is that cheese? Uh, oh. Just repeat it just in case they missed it. Yeah, so this is grated mezitra cheese. I put this at the end. So after you have like your plate going, you can also mix it. Sometimes I mix it in with the sauce. It's also a good little tip. This is this how it comes, like in this block. And so I just grated that into this. Awesome. You can also use, yeah, you can also use, um, depending on where you are, you can use kefalotidi, you can use Mm -hmm. Bajan cheese, um, whatever you have, really. Um, I think mazita is the best with this. Parmesan also works really well. Yeah. Then uh, we also want to make, make uh, an acknowledgement that one of our guests, Georgia Balafas, who's actually cooking along with you, she just made the Diro Kafteri. Okay. How'd it turn out, Georgia? Is it okay? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn well, her camera on real quick. Yeah, let's okay. turn her camera on. Yeah. 
It makes a lot. So you'll and, have a lot. Georgia, audience. join us. All the way from Boston. All the okay. way. Here we go. Cafe D. Oh. Beautiful. I've never used it. I've never put yogurt, actually. Really? Okay. Have you tried it a little bit? Yes, I tried it. It was really okay. good. Okay, yeah, the yogurt just um, it smooths out the the dip, and then it kind of balances that saltiness. So it's yeah. actually a tip I found in Greece when I was was there. I was like, how is this like so smooth? Because I've had it like so chunky before, you know. And they said throw yogurt in it, and so I started doing that, and it's wow, it's great. We're making kima too. Okay, good. How's, is, are you almost done? How's the sauce turning out? It's good. I, I might have not put the cinnamon. I might have just used my recipe. So more like garlic, oh, okay. onion, white wine. So okay. White wine. There white you go. Good. Um, <laughs> the red. And then, um, yeah, I'm just salt, pepper, and oregano kind of girl. And much like you, uh, chunky tomatoes. Like yeah, you. I like that. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, the chunkiness is just, I don't know, I like it. Me too. So, Georgia, are you going to invite Foti over to have some of this? Have some of this? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, you're better oh, off alone. No, she's going to drop. She's going to drop it off tomorrow. I'm going to drop it off tomorrow. Okay, you got it. No worries. There you go. Awesome. Thank you, Georgia. That's so yeah, so fun. Okay, I'm going to check on the quinoa really quick, and then um, it'll probably be about ten minutes for the pasta and the quinoa. If you want to talk about any or Greek, anything more Greek wine club or Greek is on. Yeah, so Ari, I think this is, yeah, this is a good um, opportunity to let our guests know that uh, Eleni's cookbook is available on our newly released app called Greek is on. Yes, her, uh, her cookbook is there. Uh, the wines are there. A lot of uh, cool foods are there. There's all sorts of good stuff. And just to inform people, it's the very beginning. This is a growing, growing, growing app. We have like the bare minimum right now, but every day, every week, every month, we're going to be adding more and more. So please check it out if you can. It's a free app, but just check it out. We have a lot of good stuff. Her cookbook has the most beautiful photography standing up on the table. You know, you, I was going to say this before, Eleni. You say like, you know, you don't know this and that, and you're, you're just standing on the table and you're trying stuff, but lighting is so important in photography and you have the lighting down pat. Kudos to you. You nailed Thank it. You. It's just this overhead light that's up here. That's it, that's it. That's all I right. really have. What, whatever it is, you have oh. the lighting very well. And you, everybody out there can, if, if you, if you want to see a little bit of this, like right now, go to our Instagram, uh, Eleni underscore Saltas on Instagram. Follow her. Her photography for her food and her recipes is phenomenal. Just check it out. Thank you, you guys, for flattering me. I really appreciate that. Stuff. <laughs> Ari, it's got to be the lighting in Utah. There's no, there's no. It, yeah, yeah, because I, I use my regular light, and like everything comes out horrible. So we, we, we use lanterns, and so um, <laughs> oil, <laughs> oil powered. <laughs> Yeah. Greek olive oil. Yeah, my, my family stands up and just like folds it and then you know I go, <laughs> they yeah. got the Greek candles. Yeah, Greek candles, yes, yes. Well. Are 40. yes. You're not gonna live this one down. Eleni, every segment you do with us, this is gonna live on. That's okay. It. I yeah, uh, I'm from I'm from like 1800 <laughs> apparently. So Pilgrim. yeah, Pilgrim, Utah. Yeah. <laughs> I I how do you how do you find the uh the that camera contraption we sent you to do this uh, segment. You guys figured it out okay? Yeah, yeah, we got it. Yeah, <laughs> everybody can handle it. Yeah, he handles nice. all that. Nice. Awesome. I'm excited about that app. I think it's going to be really great. And it's really cool that you're showcasing so many uh, Greek products. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it, you know, it, stuff out there, you know, we, we try to do very, not like everything, but like it's almost like, like curated yes just, that's, just the that's stuff so we like the stuff we think is the best and well, again that's another reason why you know we 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 got in touch with you because you have a great following you're, you're very popular on social media and there's a reason for that 
and you know we saw your cookbook we 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 saw your stuff on social media and we were like yeah this is this is a great match for us and thank you so much for being with us of course yeah appreciate that all of course and uh, I, th I think Eleni, as we're getting ready for the uh, the main course, yeah. is we also have a wine that's going to go with the macaroni with quinoa. Yeah. And uh, let's just talk about that real quickly, so we don't forget it. Um, so in Eleni's hand, she's showcasing the 2019 Xinomavro <laughs> yeah. uh, from Vaini Vineyards in Nausa. So we had this conversation earlier. Um, you know, a lot of meat dishes come from a lot of the northern parts of Greece, you know, mountainous areas. Um, and Xinomavro is a variety that's popular in northern Greece, but it's also been said that there's been research that it could be genetically identical to Pinot Noir, the French variety. Isn't there a way to scientifically prove that? Yeah, they're doing a study, they've been doing studies at US USC Davis in California uh, and there's a lot of research being done on finding the origins of these grapes. And they're finding a lot of similarities genetically to these two grapes. Uh, they haven't confirmed it yet for different reasons. And I'm not going to go into the details, but, you know, it'd be a game changer if the reality was that Pinot Noir is Xenomabro, being that it's a Greek variety. You know what? I'm going to go with the fact that French wine is Greek. That's there it. you go. I was just going to say that, but you said it. <laughs> um, so, well, what, what does that mean? What does Xenomavro and Pinot Noir mean? So basically, these are grapes that grow in cooler climates. So the cooler the climate is, the less sugar is attained in the grapes. So they make slightly tart red wines that are dry. So Xenomavros are light, drier red wines. And the drier they are, the better they work with heavier foods that have a lot of fat and oils. So Kima, which has a nice uh, content of fat and oils in the dish, is uh, basically this structure of red wine works well with meaty sauces. And again, we're going to go back to, you know, balance. We're balancing, you know, the wine with the food. So if the wine was too heavy, it would take away from the flavor of Eleni's meat sauce. So Xinomavro happens to be light enough but has enough flavor and structure to work and pair well, which Eleni is going to demonstrate that sip uh, pairing when her dish is ready. Yes, I'm my glass. I'll get my wine ready. We're almost ready. Pasta's almost ready. Sorry for going late for anybody. Um, We're on Greek time. Yeah, yeah. They just it does come together fast when you're just like only doing that, but. Going back and forth, I'm like conversations, you know, this dealing, is dealing with forty for an hour, like just yeah. those it's things not so much. Yeah, we'll say, yeah, hope everyone's enjoying. I have this ready, and I have my rosé. Oh, well, before before you try your dish, um, Eleni, this time I want yeah. you to have a sip of the Xenomavro by itself, and then have it again with the food. Okay, I'm have a sip now. Well, I have two sips. Okay, I was, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll gulp. Chug, sips. chug, chug. But, uh, you know, there's a science. Right? Know, we got to see her reaction. The science between. I was like, that's actually a really good wine. My mom's are here. I was like, that's like, yeah. Some reds, I feel like, I'm not like a wine. I'm not like trying to like fake it. I'm, I do like wine. Right. But some reds are sometimes like so dry that after I'm like hard to oh, talk. Sometimes yeah. actually, this is really good. The fact that you said that, the dry there are, Lenny, that means that they need, they, they need to be with food. Okay. Uh -huh. So let me ask real quick, Foti. She said some red wines. She's like, oh, and very dry. Like, what is, is that? The tannins? Well, what is that? It's it's uh it's the it's the level of alcohol in tannins. So tannins again are those oily compounds that are found in the grape seeds that that produce that like grippy sensation on your palate. The grippiness but is what makes you dry. Correct. Yes, and that's contributing. Like you need a glass of water. It's it's the bitterness that comes from the grape seed oils. Okay. It's bitterness. So, but then again, you know, we're not used to those sensations. So, Eleni, if you haven't consumed a lot of dry wines over time, your palate's not used to it. But over time, your palate will adjust. So when you start drinking more dry red wines, it will be a little more easygoing and more inviting, right? It's more of a shock factor to your palate when you're when you're having dry wines like that for the first time. Right. It's, it's just chemical reaction of how our, our body works. So yeah, 
I mean, dry red wines are not the most pleasant in the beginning, but when you give them a little bit of time, they evolve and they soften. And when they're, when they're consumed with food, they become elegant. Well, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, sorry, Lady. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. You're wrong. But when you, <laughs> when you, when you say, when you say over time, you know, it sounds like you're talking about an okay. amount of time. I'm thinking the first glass to the third and fourth yes, glass. I'll break. Yes, you're right. Let me break it down. From the moment you you pop the cork, or you unscrew the cap, because we're big fans of screw cap wines. Yes. The moment you do that, right? Your wine is evolving by the second. It's changing. So that very first sip that Eleni just had right now will be a lot different in the next 10 minutes, in the next 30 minutes, in the next hour, if it lasts that long, right? Yeah. But, <laughs> but wine, wine does evolve quickly as it's opened. Yes. So, so in that sense, you really recommend breathing? So, yeah. Not mouth to mouth, but what we recommend is that <laughs> you open your wine in advance, right? And what I mean by advance, if you open your bottle of wine, your red wine, an hour before you have it, it should be a lot softer and smoother than it was if you first opened it. Just a tip. It, 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 no, that's very interesting because I remember a previous segment that we were talking about letting wine breathe. I open wine and I drink it all down by like the first 10 minutes and I'm probably missing a whole lot of what that wine offers. What that's saying is that you need two bottles. You got to open up your second <laughs> bottle in advance so that you can have your first one right away. You know what? I like that thinking. Right. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we have more questions from our folks. Well, that's that actually follow- very cool. I think for me, I'm like, I, I like wine, but learning all that is, is very interesting. So that's what we're here for. Yeah. So we do have a couple of questions now. Is that, is that like an, is that a new trend? Is that what is, is, is um, so you said, you said you're like, you said you're a fan of screw top. Yeah. Is that like a new trend? Is well, there a reason? Yes. Yes. And yes. Fawty, tell her why. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, screw, so screw curious. caps unfortunately have had a bad rap for being identified as cheap wine, right? Screw caps. Mm-hmm. But the reality is that, you know, wines have been using natural corks forever as their, you know, as their preferred um, enclosure. Mm-hmm. But corks are a natural byproduct of a of a tree, and that natural byproduct behaves based on its environment. So, not to get too geeky and and, and technical, but if if wine is not stored properly, um, if the atmosphere is too dry, then that cork will shrink. And then air gets into your wine and your wine becomes vinegar. It, that's just the reality. If the environment is too humid and there's too much moisture, then what happens is that a lot of moisture builds up in the, in the cork. Then that moisture can convert into bacteria. So then mold grows into your, into your uh, cork and then that drips into your wine and that's, that taints your wine. So all these scenarios happen often with wine, with natural. And that, that's, that's the geeky translation and then there's my translation which is i'm lazy and i love just unscrewing a wine and screwing the top back on and not worrying about it and everything's good so to ari's point is that with a screw cap it's a it's a guaranteed seal that nothing can get into the wine so your wine is always preserved you'll never be tainted so in my opinion well-made wine deserves to be in a screw cap so that it doesn't have to go to any possibilities of getting ruined by the natural cork um, situation. Uh, everybody out there watching, listening. I'm like very interested in this. That's a yes, really cool. No, it, no, it's real. Like it's real because like, I used to be like, all right, whatever. I don't know. But then like Fati would explain stuff. I would get, you know, screw caps and this and that. And I'm like, I used to stress about my wine being properly corked and I know. covered. I know. Right? I I'm like, do I put this on like right away? Like, I don't know. Yeah, 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 exactly. And and then the screw cap just like eased all my fears. Yeah. Screw cap all the way. I have like this, I think like this wrap of like, oh, it's not like real fancy, you know, like fancy wines. I feel like the cork for some reason. So moving forward, <laughs> don't fear the screw cap. Hey, yeah, no, I'm like, I'm all, I'm all for it. 
Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. And I think it's better environmentally, correct? 100%. We need which, because, which is 100% a, 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 a benefit. So, you know, the, the cork tree mainly grows in Portugal and there is a shortage. So at some point we're going to run out. Is no, forget the cork, people. Okay, the pasta is ready. So wait, there really is a shortage of, of corks? Yes. Well, yeah, because uh, if you think about it, the process of regrowing a cork tree takes about five years. Mm -hmm. So the, the demand of cork is definitely much higher. Uh, but if we don't move into other alternative, um, you know, approaches to, to sealing our wines, then at some point soon, there's not going to be, there's, there'll be no corks at all. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Eleni, you have a lot of followers. I'm going to, you got to set the trend it's now. That's with you, Eleni. Yeah. Yeah. I got to, I got to <laughs> save the, you set the trend. You tell people that corks, uh, the, the screw caps are perfectly good. And it's all take it now. from us. If anything yes. happens, it's my fault. I have this weight on my shoulders now. I am putting yeah. the responsibility on you 100%. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, I'm going to drain the pasta. Everything's ready. You guys continue talking about quirks. Very fascinating. Push for it. We want to I'm, I'm, pasta. I'm a fan. Yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you about quirks. Yes. But um, yeah, I mean, for us, it's all about like sustainability. Environment, being conscious about our environment. Um, a lot of winemakers today are making huge changes in their in their overall operations of how they farm, how they produce wine, and how they package their wine. So we're big fans here at Urban Wine Club Greek Wine Club Greek Azon. And Ari had made a, a point about how we like to curate our products. It's not about you know, the, the the results of the flavors and the taste of our products, but it's also the people that are behind it and what they're doing to produce these products. Very and good point. It's Very fascinating good. that, you know, we're thankful and grateful that we're connecting with like-minded individuals around the world and in Greece that are basically taking measures to bring to table products that are conscious about the environment. Um, cautious about our health because what we consume is important and i'm not just talking about the product but what does the product go through from the farming perspective like most wineries today in greece even though they're not certified organic because it's you know it's a lot of red tape it's a lot of bs blah 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 most wineries in greece come from uh, vineyards that have been organically farmed for you know ages and decades and then the winemaking process, because in Greece, you made with whatever you had, you know, that very, you know, minimal means of making products is that they bypassed all of the fertilizers, all of the, you know, these chemicals, all of these additives to manipulate wine. So one thing to be said about products from Greece, specifically the wine side of it, is that, you know, they're true pioneers of natural winemaking. That, that is so good to hear because I love Greek wine, but I can never in good conscience enjoy a Greek wine if it wasn't made in a, uh, you know, a sustainable, a proper way, a proper right. way, in my opinion, a proper way, in many people's opinion, sustainability needs to happen. Right. And, and we're big, you know, we're big fans of today, you know, we're always you know, we want to eat clean. We want to purchase organic produce. You know, we want to, we want farm raised, uh, not farm raised, <laughs> wild raised or our meats or wild caught fish. You know, that's an, always in the back of our minds when we're trying to make purchases at the supermarket or at the farm stand. But we ne we often don't consider the beverages that we drink. Yeah. And we make all this effort to eat clean and good and healthy. And then we wash it down with synthetic beverages and all that effort in the food goes to waste because we're just consuming, you know, if you think about it, I mean, if you and I are out having dinner, we're going to be good for a bottle each at the oh, end yeah. of two hours. Right. So we just consume, you know, I don't know, 25 ounces of, you know, synthetic sugar and who knows what else is in that wine. <laughs> so think about that. It's very true. Very true. But let's, 
take a look. Hey, it's steaming, but this is oh yeah, my cool goodness. This is all for me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. No, it's like I said, I doubled this so I can have this for, for my whole family today. And this is our dinner with some Tito Cafeteria and a salad. So this wow. is oh I'll do it. And I need that cool. look amazing so Thank you. and then you have parsley to add some greens if you would like that's also that's i put that as an option and then the cheese will come on top so i'm going to plate this so we can kind of like have some bites and then talk and have some yes. wine. so do you leave the 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 mizithra up to the individual to yeah. put on? you don't yeah. it yourself I, you can sometimes I actually put so like if i'm just doing just a total sometimes i, I don't even have pasta and i'll just have the meat sauce and I'll put the cheese inside the meat, and it really makes the the sauce very gooey. So okay, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's really good that way too. So that's also an option, like a low carb option to just add some cheese into the sauce. It's really good that way. Nice. For the day. <laughs> it looks so good. So I'm gonna we need to meat. invent a technology that lets yeah. us three D print these recipes yeah. in our homes while you make them. Yeah, well, that's up to you. You're the you're the techie guy, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I'm just here. Yeah. If I could do that, we'd okay. be all set. Yeah. Don't forget <laughs> about me when you do that. I can see the steam rising from. Oh, the it's so good. Yeah. I'm gonna put this over here to cool a little bit. Some more meat sauce. Uh, what time is it right now over at your area? Uh, it's in your area now. Now yeah. it's You you have clocks over there. Yeah, well, the sun's down, so that's, that's, that's the go by. It's just the sun's down, and that's about all we all we can all we do. Also, you, I, I, what are you guys? Two hours? Two hours difference? Yeah, that's why I'm like screwing up. Is like I keep I keep saying like Mountain Standard Time, Eastern Standard Time, at the same time. But yeah, we're two hours behind you. Oh, okay, so yeah, you're right about dinner time, right? Yeah, so it's perfect. So I'm sorry for eating late. Um, I'm gonna. This is my little plate. It's not that beautiful. It's not plated. So our, as nice, but like at this point, on it. Do we allow our guests to? Uh, do we open our cameras, let our guests ask questions or talk to Eleni as we're coming to? The yeah, we totally now? could. Um, let me let me say this. Um, let me hold on. Let me. Uh... So yeah, I just put the cheese on top of here. Beautiful. And I have my Tito Cafeteria. And let me tell the peoples. Yeah. We'd love to hear from any your glass of wine. And I have my wine here. Yes, I have both my wines. Bravo. And I just kind of adjust. Sorry, I would be normally sitting down, but I don't have a good. All right. So if anybody wants to unmute and un uh, and turn on their cameras. Please feel free so we could have like a little bit of a free for all. Yeah. Um, we want to, you know, uh, definitely let let you know how much we appreciate her time. Yeah, and let her let you know how awesome these dishes look. Well, you're so nice. <laughs> Thank you. You could let Fati know how boring his talk is. I was like so intrigued. I don't know what you're talking about. I was like. I am going to, I'm like so passionate. Eleni, 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 let me tell you something. <laughs> Foti is my cubado. Foti is my best friend. I love Foti. I know, but okay. let me just tell you, if you listen to this guy every day, all day, just forget about it. Is he... And that's exactly what you do. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are cubati, is that you said? We are cubati. We oh. are. Yes. Nice. I took so, yeah. the plunge. I took the plunge and I said, a Foti. And look at you guys now. Yeah. I, I, I want to be connected with you through the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're getting some folks that are sending some great comments to Lenny, but we, we'd love to encourage anyone to kind of unmute themselves and maybe say a few words. Wait, let's see. Uh, so Ari Foti said, Lenny, thank you for your fine program very relaxed fun and informative which thank you for saying that because that is the whole point we love to do things very relaxed very just have fun we're all friends i mean we just met eleni but you know we're greek uh, first of all eleni might be my cousin i don't know so <laughs> like it's very casual we're, we're all good friends we're all greek 
that makes us instantly connected. So thank you for saying that. Yes. Um, Eleni, your food looks delicious. Can't wait to try. Thank you. That's from Suzanne. Uh -huh. What a great looking dish from Mikey. Eleni, I will purchase your book. That's from KM She. I don't know what her name is, but KM She is her username. Thank you so much. Kelly oh, Papadopoulos, uh, delicious. I'm hungry. Yeah. Listen, let's just. Kelly, I'm with you. Shelly, thank you so much for joining us. It's, you know, it's a pleasure to have you with us on this segment. Yes, yes, absolutely. Georgia Balafas, who we had on camera. Thank you, Eleni. Paula, come to Utah, everyone. You'll love it. I want to say, is that your mom? I want to say camera work on point, Paula. Let me, thank you. Let me just make a, let me just make a point. Uh, back in the days when we were younger, we used to organize trips to go to Montreal with all of our friends and all the Greeks from around the New England area. We went to the Montreal ski trip back when we were younger, right? <laughs> now we should do a... <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait I, I'm just going to stop you right here. I don't know if Utah is the exact spot for well, crazy Greeks to go and party. No, exactly <laughs> my point. I, yeah, we're, right. we're, wait, wait, let, let Eleni... What did you say, Eleni? You'd be surprised. This is yeah. a... Very hopping place. Well, I, Eleni, 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 we're coming to you. You're our tour guide. Well, I was going to mention is that. I don't need tour guide because he's the factoid, but I will be your cook. There you go. <laughs> That's it. So we should do a Greek weekend retreat to Utah. Anytime. Oh, my God. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That would be I awesome. Am, are you not going to drive in a van and fill it up with good wine so we can yeah. bring it to Utah? Okay. I'm in. We'll show you the coal mines here. Listen, we, we, you know what? The, the thing about me and Fati that you don't understand is like, you can do anything you want. You could put us in a cave with no electricity because Utah just discovered electricity, right? Yeah, it was actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you could, put us, you could put us in a cave with no electricity. Just give us a little bit of wine and we'll, we'll make the best awesome. of it. We have no problem. Okay, I'm in. So, Eleni, thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything you did tonight. Thank you for preparing these dishes. Thank you for the absolutely gorgeous, beautiful cookbook. Everybody out there, please check out this cookbook. It's awesome. Eleni's Instagram, Eleni underscore Saltas. Follow her. Her dishes, her, like everything she does on, on social media is on point. It's great. She has 15,000 followers for a reason. Like we've been like fighting for followers and we just got to about, I don't know, a thousand or something. So like 15,000, like, you know, she's doing something right. Oh, don't worry about the followers. I, yeah, you should be my hype man. Do you want to like follow me everywhere and just like hype me up? Yeah, man. I, I'll, try to say anything. I'll, just, I'll just party out and I, I'll do it. I'll totally do it. But follow her, get the cookbook. Check it out on Greekazon. Check it out on her website. We have everything linked up. We want to thank Foti for all his wine knowledge. Yeah. Everything he brings to the table. He always teaches us something. Thank you, Eleni. My pleasure. And before we sign off, let's tell Paula your last name. Oh, yeah. My mom wants to know your last name. Your Who, Cretan. mine? Yeah, on your Cretan side. Let's see if we're oh, right. On the Cretan side, it's Sikudakis. Sikudakis? Do you, have a fam Do you have family in Denver? Yes! My, are you serious? I told you we're cousins. <laughs> oh, no, no, not me. No, my, 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 my friend married a Sukudakis. Yes. Yes. So, so uh, in Denver. If you come, if you, if you uh, come by an Ari Sukudakis. Okay. He went to BU where I went. Okay. I don't know. I don't. I just know him. I just know the family. If, if you ever hear of an Ari Sukudakis, he went to BU. Okay. I was with him, and that's where I met him completely randomly. Oh, my God. And I'm like, oh, your name's Adi. My name's Adi. Ha, 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 ha. And I'm like, what's your last name? He's like, Sikudakis. I was like, what? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we know. So. It's a good, good, good name. <laughs> uh, Greek, Greeks, baby. Greeks are all together. We're all related. We all share the same, but just outlook, the same views, the same everything. We, we love. Same. We do. 
All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, Thank for you so listening. Much. Thank you for having me, and I look forward to more cooking shows. Yes. I will have my crew with me again. And yes. Thank you, Paula. So uh, what's your dad's name? John. Thank you, John, for the trivia. And uh, your brother? Yes. My brother is here. My, I have two brothers. One's not here, so I'll, I'll get the other one next time, too. What's, what, his, what's his name? The one that's there. Mikey. What is it? Mikey. Michael. Mikey. Mikey. What's Mikey. up, Mikey? <laughs> yeah, the whole family. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody, for yeah. watching. Well, find me. You'll find my whole family close by. <laughs> yes, and we will we will link up all of Eleni's information on the video and the podcast. Thank you, Foti. Thank you, Eleni, again. We thank will see you. you guys next time. We hope you enjoyed, and thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Yasas.